Um, my presentation will be about what we've touched upon earlier, daylight factors uh, and, and the cracks when we're talking daylight factors and maybe opportunities to use what I call solar architecture uh, or reuse it because it's not <coughs> something that I have invented. Um, how do I go on? Yeah, so I'll look at light and health and, uh, and try to uh, pick up forgotten knowledge and I will put new perspectives on light and health for you today. Um, old forgotten knowledge, we've talked about it earlier today. Finsen, Nils Finsen, the Danish uh, doctor, uh, discovered uh, bacteria and light, how light kills bacteria, tuberculosis in the skin. August Rollier here in Switzerland practiced east-facing balconies for the sick patients, southeast to be more, sp more specific for the winter sun. Uh, English sanatoriums built around the 30s when the discovery of vitamin D, a very important vitamin, which uh, I don't understand why it's not been mentioned, but I will mention it today. It's not a vitamin, it's a hormone, pro-hormone, that the body, on the contrary to vitamins, actually produced itself when uh, sunlight, UVB, hits the skin. So they built special sanatoriums with special glazing for uh, UVB rays to penetrate glass, which is unfortunately not the practice today. Uh, also with uh, artificial lighting with Finson lamp. And uh, <laughs> this has to be seen in the perspective of today where we're actually facing a heliophobia. Where, as, I, as I see it, because the heliotherapeutic part is over overcasted by the negative effects of uh, such as skin cancer. But we have to balance. And my, my best uh, wishes for today is to, to, be, to contribute how to balance. And I would like to start with uh, I two ways of balancing, balancing this healthy light. One uh, factor is the glass, the glass quality, which I've recently been lucky to uh, publish some medical uh, results about which actually uh, shows that uh, the glass uh, influences the, uh, not only vitamin D, as I said, but also the sleep pattern when we're talking patients. We're talking about 480 nanometers, the light, shortwave light, bluish light. We have different uh, uh, transmissions of the blue light. And uh, of course, I don't have to say this, but I say it anyway, the clear glass performs best. Low iron, clear glass performs best in every way. But it's not used. The other thing is the geographical orientation Florence Nightingale advocated for in the 1850s after the Crimean War, where she saw that a lot of patients were, were wounded in the summer period and died in the winter period. Empirical studies, but uh, she also showed that they, they didn't die everywhere. They died in the north-facing uh, wards, where they received little winter sun, little vitamin D or little... Uh, uh, light affecting the sleep pattern for them to recover. So she advocated for the southeast facing Mortingale, Nighting, Nightingale wards. So all in all, this is brief uh, knowledge, technology, and different, uh, different uh, light that we have uh, experienced. And we talked about, uh, uh, Naya talked about State Hospital, built in the 60s, uh, 70s, and now we have to build in another way because we have new knowledge. But the problem is that when we look at the legislations, they only provide very, very scarce uh, leading, guiding lines, because they don't really focus on solar architecture. They focus on daylight factors, which is, uh, I mean, a high daylight factor in the east-facing room could be nice, but a high daylight factor in the west-facing room could be very, very hot especially in the summer. So we have the seasons, and we have the time of day. And the, the daylight factor, per definition, is independent of the time of day. That means the geographical orientation. And it's, per definition, independent of time of year. So we stand with little tools in creating a healthier architecture if we look at the BR. <clears throat> and that is why we have seen uh, I have studied in my PhD thesis called Light Architecture and Health. I've studied this uh, not very good period for architecture, 
called the antibiotic age from spanning from Second World War and up till 2002, where light is reintroduced as a health factor. But you have hospitals like the state hospitals that Naya talked about actually being built in the wrong axis. This hospital receives no winter sun in the morning. All the patients facing northeast, they don't have the morning sun for the critical period, as Nightingale would call it. You have long, deep floor buildings where artificial light be becomes aut autonomy, uh, becomes aut uh, gets autonomy. And uh, when you are focusing on high daylight factors, you have architecture like this. I call it mosaic, visual deserts, or call it what you want, but there's no difference, really, because what you're focusing on is quantity. Um, and uh, uh, a clear result of that is that here is the Paimio Sanatorium by Alba Alto, and here is uh, the SEB Bank in, uh, in Copenhagen with the new energy demands. It deteriorates the glass because there's two large glass areas, not uh, considering the, 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 the geographical orientation. <clears throat> so to quote uh, Paul Henningsen, which is a famous uh, architect in Denmark, uh, he said it in 1926, <laughs> but it's still a very actual uh, thing. Uh, the introduction of electrical lighting, we have, we have experienced a disintegration of the furnishing of the rooms corresponding to that of the heat, dissipation and transition from the stove to central heating. Neither heat or lighting generally have found the quality it had before these modern installations. I, I think it's a good quote because I feel a little bit the same, because I see the glass deteriorating and I also see uh, the buildings uh, being built too, too wide, uh, too, too uh, deep. So you're actually depending on uh, low quality uh, artificial lighting. Um, and I made some studies, how can we move on? And I, I made some studies using a lot of cameras shooting at the same time. This is a room, this is a small room uh, during the day. And I put it together with the circadian rhythm. You have all, we have heard the deepest sleep, the lowest body temperature, cortisol onset, which we have not spoken about, but it's at six o'clock, we have to get up in the morning. To get up, cortisol is being produced actually on the remains of melatonin. So uh, we have, the, uh, this creates deepest raise in blood pressure, so on, so all together, this period is very essential when we're talking light because that actually promotes our circadian rhythm while on the other end, uh, this where we have the highest temperature and the highest blood pressure and the highest temperature in the building, light, sunlight at this time does not promote health. And that is why a west-facing room performs very, very badly when we're talking uh, light and health. And that is why an east-facing room performs perfectly, depending on the latitude, because the further north you go, the more you have to turn southeast uh, towards the morning sun. This is the morning light, and this is the evening light. You see, the north side is the dead side, and we've heard that uh, you need light in the day to sleep good in the night. So, as a consequence, north is not providing uh, as good a sleep pattern as uh, east, south. Of course, I know uh, planners cannot plan a building with uh, only one east-facing side, but they can rearrange uh, patients so that the primary are, are, are facing east. And if we look at the spectral distribution of, this is a southeast facing room, the top, and this is a northwest facing room, the bottom. If we look at the spectrum of the light, we actually have high peaks of uh, bluish light coming through uh, in the morning in the southeast. We don't have that in the northwest. So again, again the quality of light 
if you look at the quality of light, not the daylight factors, but the quality of light, this is the way to work with it. Um, but how do we obtain with the energy demands we have today, very strict energy demands, how do we obtain the clear glass and, as I said, the uh, geographical orientation? Well, actually, we can combine them in a method that I have worked on, uh, which is being used at the new Hurlow Hospital. And currently, we are working on it with the new Vidor Hosp Hospital, where we are making the building sort of answer to the asymmetrical uh, daylight or sunlight, so that we reduce uh, the, the, the glazing where the hot sun, where the high sun is, where the high amounts of UV is, because now we're working with UVB. That's something new and there's something healthy. But we have to balance it. We cannot have uh, large glazed uh, uh, southern facades. That would, that would create too much UVB. Uh, and the east facing room, we can, as I suggest, this is just a sketch, but we can face the east-facing uh, uh, window, so that the patient received the morning sun. And if you take the south, reduce the window opening, place it somewhere in the room, and in the west, actually put the window a bit away from the patient, maybe. This is just suggestions. But when we are talking about reducing the, the window openings or rearranging it, I'm not actually reducing it, I'm just rearranging it, this could be a, f a feasible way of, of doing it. Uh, north, I would open up, have a large glazing towards the north when we're talking inpatients where they're spent 24-7. They don't receive that much light, as you've seen. So optimizing the glass facades towards the north would be uh, a good way also to maintain uh, high daylight, uh, high daylight uh, levels in the room, uh, in the building. Um, yep, this is the circle actually showing that our bodily response is a response to the rotation of the Earth around the Sun, actually. Because when the Sun is in the north, a few, few, things, about, few things about this, but when the th Sun is in the north, we are, we are, we are at uh, midnight. It's much easier to say the Sun is south when we're midday, because then you see it. But actually, the rotation of the Earth, we can use that in the planning of architecture. We can, we, can, we can say to ourselves, okay, the sun always goes from left to right. So plan it, time, put timing to the sun and make architecture a response to the movement of the sun. Or in other words, uh, create solar architecture that has the good benefits of the clear glass combined with the high demands on energy. So you don't get overheating, which is a, a big problem, especially at hospitals. Um, and I will finish with saying that this asymmetrical positioning of the windows and the, and the architectural facade can actually also inspire to, to create um, an asymmetrical artificial lighting that actually again becomes a response to the ar architecture, which is a response to daylight. So you have like a feeding chain in the way you plan architecture. So you can have asymmetrical um, artificial light lighting up the part of the room where there's no daylight. So you have the you don't get it mixed too much, uh, and you have the long transition uh, like we have in Denmark, that you have them sort of separated between light and darkness. Here you have the north facing room. Yeah. And you can watch uh, these. Uh, the, I've made some video films about this. So you can check them out. They will show you long version. It's 30 minutes of real time, uh, not real time, but yeah, what you call simultaneous time lapse. Uh, studies of uh, seasons and orientations and yeah stuff that will I think I hope will interest you. Thank you so much.